I would like to first give praise and thanksgiving to God, Ama, Oyame, Chi, the spirits of our ancestors, those who are in front, those who we follow, and my family and friends. For without these entities, I cannot be the person that I am today. All of my achievements are a direct result of their presence within my life. I come to you this morning with the ancient Egyptian greeting of Hotel, which means peace, but not that surface peace that we hear every day throughout our lives, but an inner peace, a peace that comes from knowing who we are, a peace that comes from knowing our relationship to God, a state of being that cannot be changed by any external activity, no matter what we go through in life, no matter if we didn't get the job that we wanted, or if we didn't get the grade that we wanted, we still have that peace. Graduating from the only male historically black college in this nation, I thought it'd be fitting to begin with a poem, a poem that I heard during my freshman year in crown form, a poem that for me put our mission, put our identity into perspective. It's entitled, I am a black man. I am a black man, an African man. My history is that of humanity. My roots predate the calendar. Africa is my home. My contributions are all that is, has been, will be thought. All that is, has been, will be said. All that is, has been, will be done. I am a black man, an African man, my father's son. My thoughts include his thoughts. My blood and bone and flesh include his. My work include his spirit. I follow in his footsteps. I continue them and make my own. I am a black man, an African man. Speak to me not of compromise. I am a straight line, will. I am an upward spiral, growth. I am a circle, fulfillment. My goal is perfection. My path is productivity. My vehicle is power. I am a black man, an African man, reascending my throne. I tolerate no obstacle. Hindrances do not deter me. I feed on impediments. I shall purge my kingdom. I'll all pouches beware. It's game warning time. I am a black man, an African man. Do not attack me with media cries of chauvinism. Do not try to change me. I reject the effeminate. Do not ask me to cry. Tears are for the trembling and watery eyes and the theme to the warrior. Do not attempt to domesticate me. I cannot protect you with this pen hands. I am a black man, an African man. In time of war, present me with harmony, but, but speak not to me of peace until victory is ours. Present me with unconditional love that I might present us with unconditional liberation. I am a black man, an African man. Acknowledge my strength. Offer me not prizes for my weakness. Do not encourage the superficial. Tempt me not with diversion. If you are my friend, fight by my side or heal my wounds. If you are my enemy, confess. I am a black man, an African man. Detained but not, but not destroyed. Enslaved but not extinct. Conquered and oppressed but not for long. I am a black man, an African man, fighting for the future, heading for home. Manhood be my momentum. Nationhood be my challenge. Familyhood be my reward. In a time when we honor our most prolific black scholars, our most prolific black academic achievers, with the names of one of the most racist and insidious murderers of black people that the Western world has produced, let us know that we have forgotten who we are. That the miseducational process that Carter G. Wilson so vividly explained to us over 70 years ago still exists today. Cecil Rhodes, of which we get the Rhodes Scholarship from, was English main agent in the colonization and destruction of black people in Southern Africa in the 19th century. In the same tradition as the white man's burden, written by Rudyard Kipling in 1895, which said it was the mission of white people to civilize the half-devilish, half-childish black people of the world, Cecil Rhodes wrote, and I quote, the native blacks must be treated like a child and denied the franchise. We must adopt a system of despotism in our relations with these black barbarians and establish an order with the right race as the ruling class and the non-race as the rule. After the billions of dollars that he made from the exploitation and rape of black people and their resources, he was able to start a college fund to, to continue the dominance of white males at Oxford University. And we honor this man. And we hear institutions brag and boast that they had this many role scholars or they had that many role scholars. If we recognize who we are as a people, there will be a better chance of giving a person of Jewish descent a Hitler scholarship, of giving the elderly black man from backwoods of Mississippi a Ku Klux Klan scholarship than to honor me or any black person with the Cecil Rhodes scholarship. We have been fooled into believing that once we become the CEO of some Fortune 500 company, or once that we become a stockbroker on Wall Street, 
that once we become a stockbroker on Wall Street, that our struggle is over. However, Amos Wilson listeners know, it is not the destiny of black people to serve the political interests of any other people on this world. We ought to be economically, morally, spiritually, educationally, intellectually, intellectually politically and socially independent. And for this to happen, we must make a commitment. We must make a commitment to ourselves. We must make a commitment to each other to uplift black communities, to uplift black people wherever that they may be. So as we leave this campus green and go out into this world, we must use our individual degrees. We must use our individual professions to accomplish this task. So for all of us who's going to education, we're not striving to be the first black principal of some school. We're striving to open black schools in black communities to, to combat the hundreds of years of miseducation and de-education that has destroyed our children's mindsets. For all of us that's going to law, we're not striving to be some corporate attorneys. You understand? We're striving to open up a black law firm in a black community to combat the social injustices that are systematically and unapologetic unapologetically committed against our people, as highlighted by the Diallo, Johnson, Diallo case. For those of us that's going into medicine, we're not striving to be some head physician at some general hospital. We're striving to open up black medical centers in black communities to combat these diseases and, and, these diseases and, and viruses that are put on to our people every day on the street, combined with the denial of health care. For those of us that's going into business, we're not striving to be somebody's corporate manager. We're striving to open up black business in the black communities to create jobs for black people so we can put some of that $500 billion spending power back into our hands. If we don't do it, who will? If we don't use our gifts and talents for the benefit of black people, then those same gifts will be used to uplift other people while at the same time the demise of our own. When the, when the black historian, famous historian, Theophile Benga came and spoke to me two years ago, he told us that we must work for 10 that we don't understand the responsibilities that we have to our people. We don't understand how many people's hopes and dreams and aspirations are dependent upon the decisions that we make in life. For all our people, those who won't make it to college because of the lack of love and resources in inner city black schools, we must work for them. For all our people, those who are caught in the prison system, which is turning into another form of slavery, because the institutionalized means of achieving this American dreams was denied to them. We must work for them. For all our people, those who don't know where their next meal is going to come from, those who don't know where they're going to lay their head at because they've been kicked out of their homes, kicked out of their communities, as we saw the, the fences around the communities when we came to this campus because some heartless, greedy, and greedy businessmen wanted their land to build new homes and malls for other people. We must work for them, for all the spirits of our ancestors, those who gave life in the time of living hell, in the time where they saw their fathers and brothers' heads on post throughout the plantation, in the time where their mothers and sisters were raped more consistently than they were fed, in the time where babies were cut out the wounds in their stomach and their heads were stepped on in front of the whole community to destroy our spirit. They gave life. They passed it on to us, knowing that one day that their spirits will be avenged, knowing that one day truth and justice will reign free onto this world again. We must work for them. So as we embark on our separate paths, paths, we must always remember that we are, in the words of Easy Arcoda, the next generation of which you speak. We are the young, the aware, the strong. We are the future leaders of blackness. It is for us to learn of that which we did not see. We must reconstruct and redefine all that occurs in the past and present, in the future and even in the conditional. For even today do we bear the burden of struggle. Some of us know it for what it is, other, others of us see it for something else. Still, still others of us see it not, intoxicated as we are by this land of the free and the brave. And there are those of us who have opted to assimilate, incorporate, in hopes that we may evaporate into the whiteness of oblivion. This is the nature of our struggle, as was yours to announce the strength and determination of our people to remind us of all those who proceed and to win the way for all those who follow. So as us to free each other from the illusionary unreality we live, to encourage our brothers to end divisiveness, materialism, and eager hungries after somebody else's world, to free our sisters from the slave chains of drugs, unwanted and ill-begotten babes, and society pronouncing as white as beautiful. Ours is to recreate the unity and self-love that will be our uplifting. None among us is potentially worth this. We ought to realize this in our struggle. Ours is the education of those who have not heard, so that the ignorant may become our orators. Ours is the enlightenment in the darkness of this still oppressed land. 
of those who have no sight so that the confused may rise to become our decision makers. And ours is the fortification of the soul with the spirit, love, and strength of our culture that the devil later may become our mightiest healers. And ours is the will, the vision, and the determination that nationhood, nationhood shall be your prize. I say, thank you.